Hello everyone, it's Edgar Johnson with the IR Gurus here, back again for yet another Microsoft-based video. So once again, I told you all I would be delivering uh, a suite of integrations showing Curate Our Suite's integration with Microsoft. This is the SOAR portion of that. I also plan to show uh, Federated Search, Data Connectors, and some of the other cool stuff we can do. For now, let's start at just looking at the SOAR integration. So once again, if you navigate to the IBM App Exchange, you can find all of your different integrations. Here I've gone right to the Azure Defender for IBM SOAR integration. Now some of the cool things you can do here, you can list, set, update, and delete Defender indicators. You can search for Defender machines by IP address and by file hash, isolate slash unisolate machines, res uh, restrict or unrestrict apps, run an antivirus scan, and quarantine files and get file information. So this is one of my uh, favorite integrations out of the Microsoft suite. Uh, within the actual Defender incident, uh, we have of the alerts that make up the incident and a variety of, uh, of different data. So let's start from the beginning. What you first wanna do is navigate here and download. And remember, once you hit download, it's then going to generate a package file and then once you generate that package file you're going to come in here select that package file and then install it now like i said i won't go through it but it'll be a zip something like this if you hit open then you'll be able to see it install it and then you'll have a lovely defender within your uh, app so i'm going to go to it show what it looks like a little bit so you currently see the details, customization, and configuration. So very similar to the Sentinel video that I did, the setup is uh, pretty much the same. So what we're going to want here is the tenant ID, client ID, and app secret. And what we're going to really want to pay attention to is, like I said, the permissions that we assign to the application registration. Also, the polling interval. So you can pull, uh, comment out this polling interval so that every Defender incident that is created doesn't create a ticket in IBM SOAR, or you can filter those incidents using these filter, uh, these incident filters. So not every Defender alert that the EDR generates needs to come into here. You might just want high, medium, or low level alerts, maybe only care about the high, then comment this out and only allow the high alerts to come through. Um, and we can kind of talk about that later on. I'm going to do a use case video. These are a lot of the installation videos, but I'll soon do a putting it all together and I'll talk about how you might use Defender, Azure Signal, and Azure AD in a, a legit playbook. But uh, this is the configuration that you want. So let's go through and actually figure out how we're going to knock this out and accomplish this. So let's go to uh, Active Directory. Let's go to our app registrations here and let's generate a new registration. So that's the first thing you want to do. Uh, I won't run through all of this, but once you register and create this application registration, you'll be able to go and I'll just go to the one that I already uh, created here, uh, the Defender ATP. And then in here, you'll be able to see kind of this quick overview which is going to have your client ID, object ID, and your tenant ID. So right away, right in here, you can go into your admin settings, your tenant ID and your client ID. Those are going to be a given. So your client ID and your tenant ID, copy those, and those go respectively here and here. I would like to point out that you can also create secrets, and so you can add a secret and assign that uh, API key and then filter that as well. So you have a couple of different options here. Uh, now what you wanna do is make sure you have the right API permissions. Nine times out of 10, when this app doesn't work, it's probably because of uh, a firewall issue or you know maybe a proxy issue or it's because the correct permissions aren't assigned. So I always hit on this. So you wanna be able to go and add your permissions. You want your Microsoft Graph user.read and your threat protection. You want your advanced hunting read all, your custom detections read write all, your incident.read all and your incident read write all. And Defender ATP, 
you want all these different permissions from advanced query, read all, alert, read, write, foul, read. And, and these permissions make sense and because you're really going to be able to take an isolation or an unisolation action, run an antivirus scan, and be able to pull a lot of information back and forth from that platform. So you kind of can get why uh, you got to assign all these different permissions here. So once these permissions are assigned, you want to go on ahead to certificate and secrets over here. And what you want to do is you can either generate a new client secret or you can use one of the existings I have. Like I said, uh, when you generate the secret, only the value, you want the value. Do not take the secret ID. Secret ID does not equal secret value. So make sure you get the value and then you put that in your final, you know, app secret uh, settings over here. So once you have the right permissions assigned and you've generated the secret, you're good to go. Um, another quick tidbit I want to go through about these permissions. Sometimes these are tricky to find. Threat protection and defender ATP. Uh, one thing that you can do when you add those permissions, if you go to APIs, my organization use, if you type in like Microsoft here and then you do threat protection, then you should be able to see kind of these different things. And so make sure you include all of these in Defender ATP. Um, a lot of times you can even come and you can write KQL from our platform and it'll run on uh, Defender uh, incidents and send no events. So there's a bunch of different things you can do here. So I'm just reminding you, make sure you have all these permissions here um, assigned. So once you have all of that, you're ready to test your application. So uh, you can fill all this stuff in. Uh, you could save and push your changes and then you'll show ready for use. Once again, you, uh, you can always download the log, verify that you know everything is working. I like to always download the log after I install the integration. One, because it helps me also realize uh, and make sure that the stop. So one thing you'll see just by even looking at the log that the polar is running that syncs defender incidents and uh, uh, SOAR cases. So you, like I said, that's optional. You can disable that and only filter on other things. But uh, you see this is clearly working. All right. So last but not least, what does this actually look like? So when you install this app, if you don't end up with a tab automatically created, uh, you want to go on ahead and make sure you create and install a Defender uh, tab. So within that Defender tab, if in your fields, you search Defender and you customize the layout wherever you want. Uh, really, the key things you want are the data tables, the alerts, machines, and indicators. So those are going to be some of the key things you want. So you go on ahead, hit save there, and it'll create that layout. Now, this is what it actually looks like in practice once it comes in uh, to the system. One thing that's really cool is if, if you are if you're also have in, uh, Signal data, so Microsoft Signal data, then it'll start linking these incidents and different things together. So that's one thing that can be, you know, really helpful uh, and just kind of making sure that your signal incidents and your defender incidents, everything is uh, kind of lining up. And those will be related, you know, cases automatically. So kind of coming in and, and looking at that, you can see first, you know, within this defender tab, the defender incident URL, all the alerts attached with the defender incident will be in this alert table. Um, you are always able to update the alert or do anything like that and refresh and look for more. Uh, the machines part is one of the, the most interesting uh, data tables, like I said. Being able to come, once it finds the machine that, that hash or that is involved within the attack, then right ac across here, your isolate actions, your app uh, execution restriction, your investigation package, all of your, your magic is right here at your tab. So you wouldn't even have to go back and maybe even look within that defender in system you could bring all that information into your SOAR platform and then the defender indicators that just take a look at you know uh, the defender uh, uh, the different IOCs here so the different IP addresses that are involved the value 
and the severity and then the different action that has happened. So block, audit, audit and then even the Shreya hash from the malware that we had on our machine. So it's pretty good and it shows you what this is created by and uh, how it's all been blocked. Also, when all this information is pulled from Defender, it'll automatically be added as an artifact where now you start to see the IBM threat intelligence you start to see virus total alien vault and you can open it up to the other greater automation actions and you see this is added by Microsoft Defender and we already know that this is bad news here so that automatic sync and some of the things that you can do here like resetting password for Azure AD and stuff that I'll get to later all of this matters so this is just an example of installing uh, the Defender uh, app so just a quick you know review of everything make sure you create the application registration assign the proper permissions make sure you have your permissions here once again go into active directory app registrations new registration then come here and like i said go into that new registration you just had here and within that get your client id your uh directory id and your secret, your secrets are here to generate here, your permissions are here, make sure you get all the right permissions, and then add all that information to your configuration, your app.config here after you install the app, run your incident filters or decide whether or not you want to disable polling here, and then watch the magic happen, test your app, look at the log, make sure the polar is running, and see what you get. So, That'll be the end of my video, and uh, thank you all for listening once again and looking forward to the next iteration.